<clears throat> this is going to be a little broad, but the strength of any hometown is the football team. Like so many people hinge their school's pride on the strength of their football team or their basketball team, whatever, that it can literally be devastating when that sports team is like erased, just out of existence. I personally cannot imagine um, any kind of like secondary or undergraduate educational institution that does not have a sports team. And it's really about as bad as when schools cut the budgets for their arts departments. And most times the arts is what's first to go. And personally, I am an arts advocate, but today I am going to be on the side of sports. Cutting arts is one thing, but I, cut, I think cutting sports is going a little too far. I would also like to say that the, the impetus for this video, I was at, I was working at the movie theater and I was cleaning a theater and I turn around and Tony the Tiger is calling this kid saying that like schools, like sports have been cut all across the country. And the kid was like, oh, oh no, Tony, that sounds bad. And then Tony said something in reply. I don't, I don't quite remember. When I saw that, I did that little nose exhale thing <laughs> and thought that's dumb. Schools only cut their flaccid theater programs. They don't, they don't cut sports until I started looking into it. I know when I was in high school, I did not do sports. I don't understand very well about the ins and outs of a sports team. There was even a point of contention between our arts and sports programs. And that was mostly when it became blatantly apparent that none of the sports people had to raise their own money. A lot of what they got to use came from private donations while our theater department had to do a fundraiser to put on a show for two nights, which I thought was kind of unfair. And it is. But really, what it kind of comes down to is the exposure of the two different groups. There's more to it, obviously, but this is what we're gonna focus on first. You can't exactly take a full-fledged theatrical production out on the road and compete against other schools. Well, well, I mean, I mean like, you can, but it's, like, difficult and, uh, the death of art conversation for another day. But, like, waiting for a success of, like, a, a theatrical, like, a competitive one-act show can last all day, whereas you can get a football game done in three to five hours. It's a much more efficient activity in terms of time. It's also easier to, to determine the winner because of the number of points at the end. And so if these teams are such a point of pride, why, why are we cutting them? Especially if like some programs like have private donations backing them. And it really, it comes down to a school district's priorities. According to Education Drive, officials say variation among schools is inevitable, but that additional cuts give the district an opportunity to examine core values and look at students holistically. It also goes on to state that, Educational equity is often viewed in terms of what happens in the classroom, but for many students, participation in sports is just as important because it teaches skills such as teamwork and problem solving and improves overall health. Sports can also improve academic performance, studies show. A 2014 study from researchers at the University of Kansas showed that athletes were more likely than non-athletes to graduate from high school, 98 to 90%. So basically what this is saying is that students involved in some sort of extracurricular activity are more likely to graduate because they have something to look forward to outside of school. There's a certain incentive to do well in school in order to maintain participation in an activity they will maybe get paid to do sometime in the future. They're able to hone their skills on the court or in the field or on the stage, but only if they keep their grades secure. This is universal. This is a universal mindset, but it becomes a problem when that student is part of a smaller school district with lower attendance and uh, seemingly dropping in numbers by the year. And in this case, there's little financial value to be seen in a school that uh, is dying. And this is also tied to an age old adage found in The Southerner. Schools that are located in lower income neighborhoods have a history of having a lack of funding. 
This is due to a little-known policy that assigns unique funding amounts based on property tax values for the neighborhood surrounding the school. Essentially, this means that the richer the neighborhood, the richer the school, which further enhances the education gap between poorer neighborhoods and richer areas. Schools like South are included in the category of schools that, due to surrounding property value and district budgetary priorities, have been facing a lack of funding for a number of years before the recent cuts. This means that the recent cuts have further ripped apart the South sports programs, leaving very little wiggle room left for extra supplies. In this case, South High School in Minnesota was faced with budget cuts for their school due to the low-income nature of the surrounding neighborhoods. These families were unable to provide the hefty donations that the richer neighborhoods and surrounding areas were able to provide, and the article goes on to say that students were faced with a transportation fee to make up for the money bus drivers needed to work overtime that came outside of doing their normal bus routes. And because the school couldn't find that extra money in the budget, they had to outsource to their student athletes. And many South students apparently were unable to pay this fee, leading to personal transportation if they could find it, or even burdening the coach with having that coach drive them to the games. South ultimately had to downsize the number of their teams, the number of games they had to play per season, as well as totally eliminate their cheerleading team. And equipment and uniform rotations expanded from five years to seven years. Students then are forced to pay extra money to not only buy their own uniforms and equipment and transportation, but that it's also certainly not in their family's budget. And good uniforms and equipment can cost upwards of hundreds of dollars. And while this like high-end equipment might last a, like a student four years throughout high school, it definitely would not hold up if there's more than one child that needs those items and plans on going into that sport. And it could be even worse if you have more than one child in a sport at a time. And it seems a little dramatic to say too, but these sports teams had to resort to fundraising and car washes. Drama kids and cheerleaders do it. You can too. And this this can be attributed to something about like gender norms and like toxic toxic masculinity or something, but that's not a topic for now. Later, maybe. Stuff like this is happening all over the country and mostly in communities that are more impoverished. It is forcing us to stretch the life of equipment, uniforms, and field maintenance to the point where it is almost embarrassing, says John Simar from the Lawrenceville School in New Jersey. A bad-looking team can lead to a lack of funding, poor school morale, and ridicule from other districts, and these labels are harmful and create an even wider binary between those that have and those that have not. And in most cases, it's better to have a poor team with good funding than a good team with poor funding. And while it might seem crazy to, like, hinge your entire point of pride on a team that's no good, it's still something to hold on to. It's something for kids to do rather than like falling into drugs. It's something for people to look back fondly on and it's something to help bring a community together. I think what a lot of this has to do is like a sudden lack of camaraderie, which is what any good team relies on. And without the bus rides to and from games, the practice time or even the team itself, the social scene of any given school can be poorer. It's cliche to say that like football or basketball guys and girls are hometown heroes, but in, in a few ways, it's very true. And with this kind of thing, it's so ingrained in American society, I can only imagine that a lack of sports would be practically detrimental to our country's overall sense of pride and identity. So maybe Tony's message wasn't so crazy after all. This is Dustin signing off, but only for now. Thank you.